What I have here is my first row of two by twos. I want to get in the picture, huh? Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be what screws down onto the roof. The reason I'm going to mark them is because I want to pre-drill holes through all of these before I put them up on the roof. I'm going to be attaching another piece of wood to the top of this. And I want to make sure when I'm drilling through that piece that goes on top that I'm not running into the screws down below. If I put one here, a hole at two, and then the piece that goes down on top, I put it at four, I know I'm at least two inches away from Once these are screwed down, my rails will cut across this way. I'll still have to drill right through the hole I already drilled to get through the metal roofing. Here's all the cleats in. I'll be able to start with the two by sixes, the two by six runners, but I need to spray a little white paint on these first. A brief interruption. I moved this anchor from the back bedroom to the kitchen area here because the principal device that's powering is this little water heater. Now what I found out with the sun gold panel attached to it is that it's generating so much more power that it's easily handling the hot water. And I even had to hook up a few other things to draw power for it. And I was still filling these batteries up easily. Since this is so much closer to the front, I decided to temporarily set the old panels in the front. Here, let me show you. I just finished washing them. It's close enough now where I can hook it up to that generator and utilize these panels while I'm building the racks for the ones in back. And what I'm going to do is take the lead that is now hooked up to this, powering the anchor over there, and turn it around and feed it into the shed. I just drilled a couple of holes yesterday and I'm going to be able to do my very first solar input test on the new Pecron generators. So I ran these all night last night for the very first time. The only thing this was running this morning was my heater, which draws about 1,350 watts. It drew down about a third of the batteries after a couple of hours worth of use. They weren't up to 100% anyway. This is the very first test I'm going to do on the actual solar input. Right now it's showing no input and no output because I don't have the heater hooked up. But if this works properly, this should immediately start inputting as soon as I hook this up. Four watts, 33 watts, 84 watts, 117, 179. So that's probably the max with this cloudiness right now. Now what I'm gonna do is hook up the old panels back to the other generator. In just a couple of days, I'll have this other one hooked up to the first panels on the roof, back to the regularly scheduled programming. Got all the cleats in and they're painted. If you watch my earlier video, I said I had a board that's going to go across this area and that's why it wasn't painted in trim paint. I'm going to install that before I put my runners in because that board is where the subsequent supports are going to tie into. I bought a whole thing of Gorilla Tape and I'm not going to have anywhere on this whole run where these metal flanges are going to contact directly with wood. I'm going to have Gorilla Tape covering all of those surfaces and in a lot of the wood surfaces as well. And this will help preserve the wood. It does get pretty warm down here. I'm worried about that wood drying out. This is the only stuff that holds up real well in the desert heat down here. Regular duct tape 
just falls apart within a couple of years. Here's a board I bought to use. Since I've got a little bit of a split in each end, I'm going to cut each end and then I'll use the end to figure out exactly where my level is. Top edge is to be exactly level with the cleats that I already put down. When I bought this board, I figured it would be pretty close to the very bottom edge of this once I came off level with this uh, with these cleats here. So let's see what we got. I marked this 2x8 because I'm going to pre-drill holes in all the way along here because part of it's going to be hanging up above that 2x4 and I want to make sure that every screw I run in there hits that 2x4 and doesn't end up in the air. There is the board in place. That dimension on that wood lined up exactly right with my cleats. Now if you're wondering why I put an extra 2x4 on top of those cleats up there, it's for ventilation purposes. When the wind's blowing, there's going to be enough room between the bottom of the panel and the top of the roof to blow the hot air. The hot air won't uh, be building up underneath of there. So these are my first two runners here. What I'm going to do is cover every edge, every surface that's pointed up or is going to contact the solar panels. I'm going to cover it with this Gorilla Tape. What I'm worried about is any spark, static electricity or something, could set the wood on fire potentially. Use this like an insulator. Well, here's the first two runners in. By the time I'm done, they're gonna go all the way over almost to that far corner of that wall. Here's a good example of why I had to do lengthwise. You see that shadow right there? If I tried to put them portrait style, it would have been a lot shorter run, but the whole bottom half of the panel would have been in shade all winter long. So this is the only way I can install them to make sure that they're in the sun all day long. Here is my first rail all the way installed. I just need to put down the bottom edge 2x2 two two and then uh, apply the Gorilla Tape. Here it is with the 2x2s two installed and all the tape applied. You ready, Freddy? Yep. Got it? Yep. This is where I'm transitioning from MC4 over to XT60. And here is the business end of the connections I just made up there. As soon as I hook this up, we should see an increase. This is the first test of the solar input on this Pecron. I've already hooked up the other one but this is the first test of this one. One eighty nine, three nineteen, five ten, five seventy six, six hundred. I'm over six hundred and it's slowly building. What I have is two ten foot MC four extenders. And then this is a 30 foot long XT60 adapter. I'll have one more here by the time I'm done. These are actually the panels that I think will do the worst because they're so close to the roof. Even though there's white surface underneath, there's just not that much area for reflection underneath. It's just about noon, what I'm getting is just shy of 700 watts incoming. We're not at the peak of the day as far as collection. Now the other one, which is out in the open without anything below it, is getting 435 watts right now. So this one's averaging about 350, 
that one's getting 435. Now remember, when I first hooked that the other one up, it was a lower wattage and then it climbed every day and it ended up almost 50 watts higher, 40, 50 watts higher at the end of three or four days than uh, the initial day that I hooked it up. Let me show you what the finished product up above looks like. Well, obviously the next tool will start right there. It laid in pretty well right here where there's the seam. I just put a washer with a long screw on this end down here. I put two of those metal clips. I think this front edge here I'm just going to paint. We do have some high clouds in the sky right today and I'm getting over 700 now. So it's still building. Probably in another hour, it'll reach the peak for today. But that's gonna be it for this edition. A lot more still down the road. If you haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'm John at the Whatever Garage. Hope to see you again soon.